it's Adam, I'm at PAX West, and sadly there are only two VR vendors at PAX West this year, but we're going to make sure that we cover them both for you. We have Shell Games and we have TerraVision Studios. This was my first PAX West, and I've been told that there is usually way more exhibitors and people during non-COVID times. I found there was actually a decent amount of attendees, but not so many to feel like you're drowning, but exhibitors in general was severely lacking. You could definitely see the entire show floor in one day. However, despite the small turnout, I was happy that there were at least two VR companies there. Hey, so I have with me here Charlie from Shell Games. So Charlie, tell me a little about Shell and tell me about what it is your role that you play with Shell Games. Yeah, Shell Games is a video game company in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We do all sorts of stuff from theme park rides, iPad games. But we also do a lot of virtual reality content, like I Expected I 1, Until You Fall, and now I Expected I 2. So for people who haven't played the first game, can you kind of give the gist of I Expect You to Die 2? Obviously without giving away like too many spoilers. Of course, of course. Alright, so it's a spy-themed Escape the Room VR game, except since it's VR we can kill you. And we kill you a lot. So you get to try strange things that a spy action hero would to try to escape super dangerous situations and see if you can get out. In I Expect You to Die 2, we had a much bigger focus on story, so it really feels like a cinematic experience like not just escape rooms, but really a spy movie that you're the star of. I love that, and I do have to say, I absolutely love the opening cinematics. I guess for both the first game and for the second one as well, like, just fantastic. I, even if there was just a game for the cinematics, I would totally buy and play and That's watch awesome. that. <laughs> Thank you. So what made uh, Shell Games decide on coming to PAX West specifically to showcase your game? We love, like, seeing people play our games and getting to talk with them, and we haven't been able to do that like in person in so long. So we seize the opportunity to come and see you all play. Like it's, it just means a lot more to see the, uh, the light in people's eyes. I can't see their faces. <laughs> but even just to see the fun that they're having, the way they express that. And also even just to see which parts of the game they struggle with or have fun with, that helps us back to make games even better. But there's also the energy of the event, hearing what people love or what they're excited about, what kind of platforms they play on. It's just great being around here and having all this energy. That's awesome. So speaking of platforms, where can people buy I Expect You to Die 2? We've got it on the Oculus Quest and the Rift in the Oculus Store. We've got it on Steam for Index, Rift headsets, Quest headsets, everything on Steam. We've also got it for PSVR. I, I feel like that's basically everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so pretty. Play it on everything that you've got, I'm sure. That's so awesome! And then I had one last question for you. I don't know if you can answer this one, but are there is there anything else planned in the future for Shell Games? Obviously, you don't have to say too much, but uh, is there anything else planned that you're kind of excited that's upcoming? There's always something new, uh, especially for us. We were really hoping the virtual reality market would grow, and it keeps growing. Reception to this, the second game, I Expected I 2, has been super great so far. So that gives us hope that we can just keep on making new virtual reality games and we'll have more and more players to play them. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for your time. And as most of my viewers out there are VR players, so again, we really appreciate, you know, until you fall, I expect you to die, one and two. Keep up the amazing work and thank you so much. Thank you. Hello, hello. I'm at PAX West and I have with me today two awesome members of TerraVision Games when they are currently working on Captain Toonhead. We have Enrique and Luis. Hi. Perfect. So tell us a little bit about TerraVision Games and I guess what each of your roles uh, are in the company. So I'm the CEO and one of the co-founders of the company and uh, TerraVision Games started making games 15 years ago. So we have making, you know, a lot of games since then, mostly, you know, for big other studios. So this is really like our first, you know, game that we do as a, you know, as our own game, as an or our own IP. Uh, so, you know, I, I say that this is where we were left unsupervised <laughs> and we had a lot of fun making this game. So, you know, it's a product of passion of the whole uh, Terravision Games team. That's awesome. And what about you, Luis? Yeah, I'm the creative director of Terravision Games and this uh, product. And basically, my job was to channel the collective creativity of the whole team and make sure that, make sure that something cohesive came out, out of it. Even though it's super crazy, I promise that it, it kind of makes sense when you play it. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that so much. So how big is the is the team? Are you guys like a small development team at uh, TerraVision or? Yeah, well, now it's it's not that small. We have been growing uh, significantly the last years. So right now we're reaching 50 people, 50. 
Uh, but in this uh, game, you know, the core team was about 15 people, uh, you know, the consistent team. Uh, but it also takes a village, right? Like uh, we have amazing voice actors and people helping us with uh, uh, three art outsourcing and animation and legal and administration. I mean, when you see the credits, it's like, oh my God, all these people that takes to make a game. So yeah, it was uh, definitely a team effort. Oh, I love that so much. I guess maybe this question might be more for you, Luis, but tell us basically a little bit about Captain Toonhead, what it's about, what we can kind of expect, all that good stuff. All right, so Captain Toonhead versus the Punk from Outer Space, it's a mix between uh, tower defense with first-person shooter elements in it. And basically what we did is we found the balance of the amount of skill that you need for the FPS part and also the strategies that you can build and you need to pay attention to to have a proficient uh, uh, tower defense experience. Everything in VR or fantasy was, we love tower defenses and our biggest fantasy was I want to be down there in the front lines with my towers to help them. So what better what better medium for doing that than VR? So this is our take on that. And on top of it, we added a very uh, wacky layer, narrative layer to uh, help you uh, enjoy a little bit about the hero's journey of Elliot Ignacio Salazar, or our main character, Captain Toonhead. We, uh, that is not definitely the hero we needed, but the one we got stuck with. I love that so much, because I guess, I mean, there's not a lot of tower defense games in VR in general, but I think the ones that are, are mostly like RPG, you know, got your orcs or elves or like fantasy elements to it. So I absolutely love the almost like wacky kind of Borderlandsy style look yeah. to it. I, I love that. It's so great. And I, and I can't wait. So what made you guys decide on attending PAX West uh, to showcase your game? Oh, I mean, we have been dying to get to an event again. <laughs> like, uh, I think, you know, we weren't, we were all going a little bit crazy working from home. And like when we had this opportunity, I mean, the game, the game is coming up very, very soon. Uh, it, it's actually even ready for wishlisting on the Quest Store and on Steam. So when we heard, oh, PAX is going to be a thing, we're actually people is going to go to the event, we're actually going to be able to see people in person. We said, this is the perfect timing for us to be there. It's super exciting, you know, it, it's, it's the first time we put the game in the hands of uh, players. Uh, so, you know, it, the, the reaction has been extremely positive. So for us, it, it, this, you know, this, it, it, you can't beat this, you know, uh, having people playing your game uh, and seeing the reactions real time in person it's it's the best feeling ever yeah. it really is yeah we've all been cooped up at home <laughs> for maybe a little too long but uh speaking of release dates so when is captain toonhead do you guys have an estimated release date and what uh, different platform stores can we find captain toonhead or, or at least wish list for it for now I, I can say it's coming out this year and like sooner than you would imagine like it's coming really really soon we can't say exactly the date we're not allowed to say it but it's, uh, it's coming very, very, very soon. Uh, and it's coming to uh, Oculus Quest, Oculus Rift, uh, so all, and all PC VR. And uh, later, uh, it's going to come to PSVR as well. Awesome. That's so exciting. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. And I hope that you have a wonderful PAX. Awesome. You. Captain Toonhand, everybody. Yeah. Have a trailer right behind me. <laughs> I actually got to sit down and play through the tutorial on one wave in Captain Toonhead. Unfortunately, I was unable to get some first-person footage due to the nature of the convention and terrible Wi-Fi, of course. The tutorials were easy to understand, and the voice acting is really superb. The game has a lot of very bright colors and has a very quirky personality to it. As far as the actual gameplay, waves of enemies come from a starting point, but you do have designated spots where you can add turrets of various types. I was only able to sample the most basic of turrets, but eventually unlocked freeze and pinata turrets, and I can only imagine what craziness you can unlock the further you progress. You can build new turrets via COGS, a currency pretty much that you get from defeating the enemies of each wave. You also have dual blasters you can use during the waves to help out when things get too hairy. What I loved most was the ability to actually switch to multiple perspectives. You could teleport to every turret you place and go into either a ground or a higher view, meaning you could pick strategic spots to shoot from quickly and easily. Really excited for when Captain Toonhead comes out, as I have a soft spot for tower defense games, weird humor, and dinosaurs. Slight spoiler, the boss from the first invasion is a Rex. I'm very grateful to both Shell Games and TerraVision Studios for giving me the chance to interview them and try out their games, and look forward to seeing what the future brings for both companies.